Well, today is November the 23rd. A uh, little bit of snow coming down. We got a bit of wind, but it's going to get nastier as, uh, as the day goes on. Uh, things call for like uh, 20 to 30 centimeters of strong wind. So, kids finally got a snow day. First one yet for the year. So, during the house, no school today. Do you want to enjoy that? But I'm out here, I got the, in the shade, I got the fire lit, getting it warmed up here. And uh, some people have been asking me to, to show around, give a little tour of the shed, you know, since I got more done. And I'm going to get around to that. But the first thing I got, well, these is going back in the, the freezer here. This is some trout and chard that the father in law sent up. I just thought I'd show you that. It's, it's going right back in the freezer. I took these out last night, sent these as well. And those I'm going to prep for the smoker. And these I'm going to make pit sick out of. And get the tails cut off those you usually leave the two fields attached and you hang them up by the tail but I'll figure something out how to hang those up so I want to get this done first because I want to get the drawing and curing process started ooh look at that I used to leave a little extra on the backbone pieces You see this trout is still partly frozen and, and that's good big char because that's good because uh, when it gets uh, when it ties down a nice little bit you know uh, it's kind of mushy so it's a lot easier to cut. Well guys I got the, the two large uh, chars split there and I got the, the fish salt on them. Uh, you see now the char still froze a little bit so I'll probably let them cure an extra half hour or so. But uh, for some, I'm going to try some Himalayan pink salt. I never actually uh, cured fish before with it, so I'm going to give it a try. It's supposed to be really good for you. you got like a lot of minerals and stuff in it. And I'm kind of getting low <laughs> on my fish salt. Lots of it in Williams Harbor, but Williams Harbor is a long ways away right now. So, <laughs> so, so I'll try uh, a little bit of this. And then, you know, these grains are finer, so. I probably won't actually let these cure so long as I'm going to let the, the ones with the bigger salt crystals because uh, I got a feeling this is going to uh, uh, make it like a little brewing quicker than, than say these larger chunks. So, so we'll see how this goes. And it's just as tasty as good and, and it may be a little healthier for you so we'll wait and see I guess what it tastes is like. Can't see why it won't be good. I tell you, the little fella absolutely loves the tipsy. Fish didn't even get froze yet, though. piece of pit sick with uh, the Himalayan pink salt as well and it was tasty it should be like I said a little healthier for you and what I come up with for hanging them is uh, I just use rabbit wire on a fish hook uh, you can use string or whatever but uh, I use rabbit wire and when I'm done with them I'm just gonna put them one side for future use but uh, I keep it hook you gotta hook not too close to the edge of the skin go down a little ways I had a little boo boo just there that he too close to the edge and he actually busted off. So you learn from your mistakes. Hang here right there. And I'll remember this one here now is the one got the uh, the Himalayan uh, pink salt. The rest is just uh, hill salt, so there you go. Seems like it dried a little bit now and the skin is toughened up there a little more. So I don't think I have any more trouble with it now and I, I kind of hooked the, the hooks down uh, a little deeper. So uh, hopefully I don't come back now and uh, be one on the floor. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so I got the, the pet six is there drying. And the char and trout is over here curing for the smoker. And that's the next thing. Seems like it cleared off there a little bit. but. Uh, I do know it's going to get worse, so I kind of got to make some kind of like a sheltered place out there for the smoker. 
and then I'm going to clear a little bit of snow and uh, put this camera on charge and come back and give you a little tour around the, around the shade here then. There goes after all sometimes it comes out. It takes just shake your shake your chips in your pan around a little bit. And just put them back in there again. Quick little peep, I don't want to lose my heat though. It's only just, oh yeah. Yeah, more smoke coming there again. Now you wouldn't uh, Sometimes like that, uh, you just burn on one side, you shake them around a little bit and you get a bit more smoke out of them. And I'm getting low on chips. These uh, these bigger ones are good too, like the bigger the chips, uh, seems like uh, you get a little more heat from it. But, uh, anyway, should be good. Alright, I'll start over here by the door. Uh, so when you come to over here, you get the, the bow saws we use. That's the ones for the kids there and that, smaller ones and metal detector and uh, first aid kits is a good thing I had to use heater a few days ago and fire extinguishers and uh, I don't know if you know it or not but I, but I don't do it now as much as some of my gear needs to be upgraded but uh, I used to do a bit of scuba diving some of my gear there and twine and uh, this china cabinet I got this one on the flea market for 60 bucks uh, this is excellent because exactly what I wanted to first put all my uh, food processing gear in to keep it uh, clean. And uh, so that sashi stuffer right there, right here got my dehydrator, well, chaga's there, and uh, meat slicer. Uh, my jerky can is back there, and the set of weights. These weights, mother had a store in Williams Harbor, and this is one of the set of weights she had in that store. So I got them here now, and it's great for weighing out meat and stuff. And uh, it's a burger press or whatever there and uh, this is my meat grinder and some spices and stuff and right here is a canner I'm going to be using heat a year I never used in the last few years uh, cans you know is a bit expensive and you only use them once well, I'm going to can up some moose to a few other things I actually had a, used to use my uncle's canner and I broke them and I bought this other one to replace it and he said this I already keep and use them and uh, when I bought that one this uh, sausage stuff or a meat grinder came with it, this hand crank one, and I never use it, but I still kept it. And in right here is some honey, uh, Gary Mass sent me that last year, and that's the last we got left, and we've been using that Energy Bars Net, but sometimes we has coffee in the shit now, and wife mixes her coffee with honey, and uh, got a couple of more things that I'm going to use it in a little later uh, to do with the chaga, but I won't get into that now. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so this is an excellent uh, china cabinet for that. It keeps everything nice and clean, you know, here in the shed. All your food stuff. And up here is a lobster pot. I was always going to pick one up or one drifted ashore on the beach, but uh, the fellow about the property off had one left and back of the gazebo. So I hung it up right there. And I apologize. I do not know who sent me this flag here. Uh, this is Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Royal Nation. It's hooked in up there. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, there it goes. Look at that. Celebration Rider Nation 2013 day are some of the greatest fans in the CFL, guarantee you. And right here I got some Martin boards and some old caribou racks. Well this one here is one the wife got there a few years ago and we're gonna be using this one for drawing fish on. Normally now we keep the the fish attached to the tail and just loop them over right, but it is kind of jerry rig it there for now. And this here is the rack and the moose got the air, pretty uneven, but, but we're not worried about that. It's a big, big animal, a lot of meat, that's, that's what we worry about. And one time, you know, fishing moose used to have license plates on them. And a couple of traps uh, somebody sent me a few years ago, I just kept them. An old hand plane, tilly lamp, my uncle gave me that a few years ago. And right here is a slicker brush and tail stripper, and also these for, uh, for flattening out the tail around the Martin board. And the lamp there, I don't know if you can see that big land trapper on that lamp there. We've given me that one for Christmas. And right up there, look, Aircraft One sent me that cut out there a few years ago. And that's the old grandfather's old bow saw there around it. And I actually won that trap there in a contest from Garrett off quite a few years ago. And some more moose wax and antlers and stuff. And 
refrigerator. I guess some Bridgers number fives. I'm gonna soon clean these traps up. I might put out some wolf sits later on. And over right here, the wife actually made that drum right there. And uh, look at this. Uh, uh, this is my nephew, he lives uh, in Porter's Lake, Nova Scotia, and I sponsored him in hockey. Look at that, big land trapper. And actually, whoever watches my videos and lets the ads run and don't skip them, ye all sponsored my nephew. So I really appreciate it, and I'm sure he appreciates it too. And some snowshoes, and floating jiggers, and jiggers. And this old radio was actually a, a wedding gift. Uh, thank you, Sammy. His, his father, Leonard, owned it years ago, and and so he, he actually gave us that. I don't, I don't even know if it works or not, but I'm going to plug it in one of these nice and fool around with it just to see, kind of tune her in or whatever. And my harpoons and gaff. Now I've seen they got flags, uh, Timberloin North. Uh, David Green, I believe, sent down with us, New Brunswick. Nova Scotia, uh, as Barry and his Trapper Hunter, really appreciate it. Uh, Garrett Brader, uh, yeah, Garrett, you gotta respect the fellow that hunts and eats rattlesnake. <laughs> uh, backyard meat, right on, really appreciate it, my friend. Cool, there, make sure. And this one here is Michigan uh, Gonzo, really appreciate it, my buddy, Heat Daniel. And he also sent me this, uh, the Stars and Stripes right there. Peter Shorting's Fly is the Irish flag. And he also sent this uh, Galway one from the city of Galway. He also sent uh, St. Paddy's Day hat and some hooks that he tied. It's a real nice gift. I really appreciate it, my friend. Right here is great great grandfather's old uh, casting net. And you know, there's a few holes in that in, but uh, I'm just going to leave it be. You know, you don't mess with, with the old stuff. <laughs> and uh, right now over there, I don't know if you see, I got some uh, old wooden floats hung down there on the rope. That's what he used to use years ago. And then uh, Johnny Campbell gave me this one quite a few years ago. That's a glass ball. They used to use that as floats. I guess that was far superior than the saggy wooden ones. This was all before plastic came out. And you know, in the south coast, uh, French hens, rough grouse, is pretty scarce. They're getting more common now, but back in the day, you know, uh, they were pretty scarce. That's actually the first one I got. So I kept the tail feathers, and Anna was with me on that hunt. And uh, some pictures and things like that. And uh, Birdie Winters, give me that uh, seal skin there. Uh, oh, a few years ago. Um, he's since passed away. He's a wonderful old man, great storyteller, well respected. Uh, great momento. And uh, I shouldn't forget Ronnie. Ronnie Williams sent me this flag. He lives in Pools Cove. Uh, he had a video, showed in a video one time how he floated the Mooksuit River. It was the first and only time I ever saw that. That was pretty cool. And Brandon Simpson, another New Brunswicker, he sent me uh, that flag. And I believe, uh, I'm not sure, I believe he might have sent that uh, dream catcher there as well. Redwood Fox, Jay Webster, he sent me, this is what he uses for trolling uh, uh, for salmon, sea kayaking or whatever, there in Trinidad, California, and he had a video the other day, a great white swam right under the kayak, I tell you, if they don't get their heart pumping, none he will, <laughs> yeah, and this is some of my ice fishing gear here, and some of my hooks and that, some of the tackle I use, and some of nice, hey, oh, look at this, Albert, uh, Jim River Gear sent me this one quite a few years ago. He made this one, and I was only using this one a few days ago in the shed to make some feather sticks. The kids wanted to light the fire in the, in the fire pit out there. So I made some fire, uh, feather sticks for him to make it easier for him. I touched them up a little bit, you can see there. Uh, I hadn't misplaced her for a little while. He also sent these fish stringers as well. And that was uh, a few years ago. Now, I'll be using this more I get the transducer misplaced <laughs> when I find I don't know where he's to. I think he's aboard line liner. I, and he was misplaced for a while. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, Todd. Todd Goodson, I believe, sent me this package a while back. Uh, Todd's Rose Hip Jam. And that's made from the Alberta Wall Rose and some other things. And he uses it on. Uh, chicken or whatever and I was thinking of trying to like barbecue some parmigan and give it a go. 
So that'll be a new flavor in that for sure. And they also sent a can of maple syrup. We'll give that one a go as well pretty soon. And uh, Ken Erickson sent me these videos, boy, that was a few years ago, uh, about uh, uh, varmint hunting. And I tell you, these videos are loaded. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in these videos. And it's not just hunting. You got like tips on filming and different things like that. And yeah, excellent videos. Excellent. Well, I should show this. There's some friends over there today. Daryl Rear and his son give us this gift here. We already ate this new sausages. Uh, we already ate one pack and they were delicious. They actually, I cooked them up here in the shed. And we also have some moose jerky and some uh, moose pepperoni. And uh, you know, I'm going to leave some of that moose pepperoni out. I'm going to nibble on that and I can give that a go. And well, I think I got some here. Some of that uh, moose pepperoni with some smoked gouda. It got to be gouda, eh? <laughs> so I'm going to munch it on the night. Got some cape on here. The kids must roast some cape on the stove, so. Be once for that. And, uh, yeah, just a, just a look around. Like I said, uh, I need to get the floor done. Uh, get the floor done and really smarten this place up, you know? And uh, some more big projects. Uh, I had that up there. That got to come down. I got to do a better job on that. That's uh, the next time I get a moose, I'll be able to hang the moose up here in the shed. And I got to do a little rewiring and put a plug in down here for the stove. He had a plug in over there for the welder, and I just pushed the stove back and and plugged into him like that for now, but that's uh, that was just uh, to get me by for now. But uh, so I gotta do a little bit of wiring, get a fellow in and do some wiring, fix that away, and uh, yeah, I suppose that's about it. I'm gonna make a stand and put the propane oven on, and I still got a bit more clearing around to do, but some people have been asking me just to show a little bit more. All side blade up there. All oh, this old paint that's been going out over another shed. I think that's just that's just taking up space there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna tuck that flag back behind you again after. <laughs> yeah, right on. So just a little look around. Uh, I was just here a little while ago. Put some more chips on the pan out there, and uh, we'll be enjoying some of that uh, smoked fish and moose pepperoni later on tonight. So I really appreciate. That Darren Alex and Alex got his own YouTube channel. I'm gonna put a link in the description and uh, yeah, I want to mention it before I forget about it. Uh, seems like I got a lot of different things to go through, so <laughs> I don't want to forget any. And uh, yeah, and really like the other shit over there. Maybe I'll show you that shit later on. But I got a nice bit of work to do over there too. But uh, that shit over there is gonna be the one like we're for tools and doing work over there and. And this one is mostly just food processing and whatever, and YouTube-y stuff. <laughs> well guys, the wind picked up and uh, the snow is really drifting around there now. It's getting worse all the time. Uh, it's actually uh, a little slower coming on that was forecasted, but I couldn't actually finish this video without showing you the fish. <laughs> just look at that there. And we're going to enjoy some of that here now uh, pretty soon. So. I'll take this out of the smoker and uh, yeah, bring that in the shed. <laughs> I should actually, I'm gonna take the whole smoker in, I think, right now because the weather and stuff. So, there, there. 